Hey, how goes it everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Well folks, they actually did it. We finally have Trunks vs. Silver in our hands. And I seriously still can't believe that it took this long for this matchup to actually happen on this show. Like, I would have expected this in Season 7 or 8, but nope, here it is in Season 9. Either way, it's still here, so it's not like I'm complaining. And I appreciate that they went with the most powerful iterations of the characters so that there's actually a debate to be had here, rather than it just being an open and shut case of Silver getting handed the fattest L known to man. Granted, Silver actually standing a chance didn't really affect my excitement for the episode, but hey, it certainly didn't hurt. And given the track record of Dragon Ball episodes on this show, I already went in expecting that this would be good. But did it meet that mark? Well, let's dive in and see, shall we? Oh, uh, one more thing. I challenged myself to not say a certain matchup relevant word throughout the entire video. If you know, you know. And let's hope that I can actually make it to the end like this, yeah? Alright, let's actually start the review for real. Right off the bat, I gotta level with you. Trunks' analysis is the weakest of the season in my opinion. As interested as I was in learning about the Xenosai of Dragon Ball, most of the rundown felt like it was just throwing names and terms at a wall, and none of it stuck for me, I'm afraid. Sure, Boba's rundown left me stone-faced, but at least it wasn't actively confusing. This, on the other hand, just felt disjointed almost all the way through. And that's not even the worst part. Even though this rundown is supposed to be focusing on a completely separate sect of the series, they still felt the need to bring up the stupid fucking Universe 7 Shockwave feat we've already heard in the last four Dragon Ball episodes. Are we just not allowed to get one of these without it being brought up again? I'm tired of it. Honestly, the only bits of this rundown I can say I actively liked were the Yu-Gi-Oh! references, like how they name-dropped THE Seto Kaiba. Man, Kaiba's so cool, I hope he gets on the show someday, but he'd need an equally cool matchup to be brought in for, maybe against someone with a similar level of status and sense of self-importance that we could see a glorious clashing of egos between the two, all while bringing an additional new series to the show alongside Yu-Gi-Oh! Hmm, I wonder... What was I talking about? Oh yeah, uh, I'm not big on Trunks' analysis, Silver's was better, but I have significantly less to say about it. For starters, I'm happy to report they actually treated Silver with a good deal of respect. The worst he gets is a comment about how he's not the sharpest quill. You'll love to see it. I also like the joke about Sonic having too many characters and Boomstick losing it over Spawn. Aside from that, I feel there were a couple instances where they leaned a bit too heavily on the whole Whoa guys, isn't the Archie Sonic universe crazy shtick? But it's not really a huge deal, and there wasn't anything here I overtly disliked, unlike with Trunks' rundown. Oh, and one last general thing, I like that they brought Jocelyn in for the cutaways. It's not a major thing, and they didn't have to do this, but they did, and I appreciate it. So the fight then. We have another simple and sweet kind of premise on our hands. Trunks is trying to arrest Silver. Boom, there you go. And while it's not necessarily the strongest use of in-media res in my opinion, it gets the job done and, hey, it gives me Miles vs. Static vibes, so I'm down for it. I guess if I had anything else of note to say about this opener, I feel the delivery on Silver's first line is just a little off. I can't explain why, really. But aside from that, the voice work in this episode is great across the board. Major props to Scott Frerichs and Bryce Pappenbrook. I mean, Esu Onsti, which totally isn't an alias, guys, I swear. Oh yeah, duh, it's also headed by the best track of the season. I wasn't sure if they'd be able to top Princes of Pride and the Metal Lotus, but goddamn, Hedge of Tomorrow certainly did it. It's so good, you guys. Anywho, the fight really starts to pick up after where the preview leaves off. I appreciate that they incorporated Silver's funny rock attack, and I like how they utilized the super transformations, with Trunks turning gold as he's catching the rock before deflecting it back, and Silver using it to tank the return shot. 
Then we get the obligatory It's No Use line and a reference to Vegeta vs. Shadow before Trunks sends Silver careening into space. And I gotta say, the shot after of Silver pulling up all of the moon rocks is pretty raw, not gonna lie. I know the Crap Baskets line has its fans because of Abridged, and come on, with Trunks' voice actor here, how could they not? But for me, the big funny moment is Trunks being a gotcha player. Oh, buddy, I know the pain of a bad roll. As someone who casually plays Fire Emblem Heroes, Pokemon Masters, and is starting to get into Fate Grand Order, plus having friends who play Granblue, Dragalia, and yes, even Genshin, this moment hits home, but in a fun way. Also, poor Oolong, Jesus Christ. Oh, and Silver redirecting the Masenko earlier? Small potatoes, because now he's doing the same with three Key Blasts at once, he pulls the Kamehamehas back before they can actually hit the Earth, and then combines them with the Gallic Gun to shatter Trunks' defenses, only for Trunks to go God Mode, power through, and absolutely lay Silver out. Holy shit. We even get a big fuck-off Key Blast from Trunks to mirror Vegeta's final flash from earlier this season, and... Looking at the two side by side, there's a clear difference between one that just looks big and the other feeling big. I don't know, Vegeta's attack just had more oomph to it with the impact and actually having a moment afterwards to let it sink in. Meanwhile, Trunks didn't really have any buildup, and afterwards Silver just kind of falls away like, ah! I'm also not sure how to feel about something like this just being the setup for the key sword, but eh, something had to be, so eh, not the end of the world. Oh yeah, speaking of the key sword, that moment he hits Silver with it and the reality just fucks up around them as the music cuts out, that's just a cool scene, man. Coupled with Silver pushing through and the two of them calling out Kronos Control and the Eternal Labyrinth makes for probably the tensest clash on the show in recent memory. All of this leading up to the climactic finale, but before we actually get to what happens, man, can I just say how much I love how they recreated the background? It feels appropriately ethereal and otherworldly, the fitting of a place outside of everything. And plus, they even included a bunch of little cameos. Love to see little touches like that. Anyway, yeah, Trunks captures Silver and readies the key sword for a final killing blow, and I honestly thought that was just going to be it. Even with how debatable I heard this variant of the matchup was, I was fully expecting that Trunks would just take another win and walk into the sunset. But no, despite everything, Silver managed to pull it off. After giving us the rawest delivery of it's no use ever, he warps Trunks' sword from his hands and hits him with a no use so hard it rends him from existence. God damn. I cannot understate how elated I am at this result. I don't dislike Trunks in any capacity, but Silver's been a whipping boy for so long, both in Versus and in his own franchise, so seeing him actually take a win here was so fucking cathartic, man. And for it to be this badass of an ending is just the cherry on top. Mwah, chef's kiss. Oh, and the conclusion feels really thorough, and they went over their bases well, which, for a matchup with this many moving parts, I always appreciate. Yep, that's, uh, that's about what I have to say about it. So yeah, I really liked it, and I'm glad it's keeping up the season's good streak, and yada yada yada, you know the spiel. That said, going into this episode with what I'd seen from the previews, I was honestly expecting to just call this episode pretty good, and say that with a season like this, that can only get you so far. But no, they just had to blow me away, so thanks for ruining my whole flow, I guess. Okay, but in all seriousness, this was a really great episode, and definitely among the upper echelon of the season. Hell, I probably would have called it perfect if it wasn't for Trunks' rundown just not clicking with me all that much. Actually, you know what? Scrap what I said about Black Adam vs. Apocalypse. Maybe this is the Black Flash of the season, which would definitely be more apt of a comparison. <laughs> and there you have it, my thoughts on Trunks vs. Silver. And given the pattern so far, I guess this means we can just lay back and wait for Sauron's episode. Or Spongebob vs. Super Friends Aquaman, that works too. Yeah, no, this one caught everybody off guard. And hell, even I didn't know what to think at first when I saw it. But after a little while of thinking, it quickly grew on me. 
sure, it's surreal to even see Spongebob on the show in the first place, let alone for an episode that isn't, like, a finale or whatever, but I'm glad that's for a matchup that can really embrace how silly the whole deal is. Plus, Liam and Louise have been gassing this episode up to high heaven, and even Origin is on record saying that this is his new favorite of the show, so those are some lofty accolades. As for me, though, I just hope the episode is just chock full of dumb fun. I love it when episodes are allowed to just get goofy, and when else to do that than with the Goofy Goober himself. So hell yeah, I'm excited for this one. And hey, here we are at the end of the video, and I managed to make it through the entire thing without saying the word. Mrs. Obama, I've done it. Seriously, guys, thank you so much for making it this far if you're still here, and thank you for getting the last video up to over a hundred views. Wow, here's hoping we can maintain that momentum, I guess. In any case, I will go ahead and call it here, and I'll see you around. Stay safe out there, and have a good one!